LumaMap is a projection mapping application for Windows and Mac. It offers powerful tools to let users create unique visuals based on a reference image, and art tools to add even more creativity to their AI designs. I have a projector connected to my machine and set up as an external, extended display, so I'm ready to get started. Upon opening the software, you will see a checkerboard. This is known as the canvas. The canvas is automatically sized to the resolution of your currently selected display. The detected output resolution of your selected display is shown beneath the canvas. Zooming in will make the canvas larger in the interface. Zooming out will make the canvas smaller in the interface. You can zoom from the menu by going to View, Zoom In or Zoom Out. Or you can use the icons in the bottom right of the interface. You can also use shortcuts. Additionally, you can hold Alt whilst using your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Import an image or video into the application using File, Import from the menu or the Import icon on the toolbar. Media will be scaled automatically to ensure it covers the canvas. Any parts of the media that overhang the canvas are partially greyed out. You can replace whatever media is currently in your canvas with a new media file using the Replace feature. This can be done using File, Replace from the menu or using the Replace icon on the toolbar. Corner pinning transformations will remain in place and be applied to the new media. Control playback of a video using the player controls at the bottom of the canvas. Play and pause the video and enable or disable looping. You can also jump to times in the video by clicking on the playback bar. You can save your project using File, Save from the menu. You can also use a shortcut. To save a project with a new file name, choose File, Save As from the menu. You can also use a shortcut. Open an existing project using File, Open from the menu. You can also use a shortcut. LumaMap is intended to be used with a secondary, external display like a projector. This secondary display should be set up to be in external or extended mode. Choose which display you want the application to use from the menu by navigating to Output, Choose Display. The resolution of each connected display is shown beside each label to help you identify which display is which. The currently selected display will be marked with a tick in the list of connected displays. Select your chosen display from the list. To output your canvas to your selected display, choose Output, Send to Display from the menu, or use the Send to Display icon on the toolbar. Additionally, you can use the shortcut toggle D. You can disable Send to Display either by using the shortcut D again or Escape. You can transform the media in your canvas using the handles at the four corners of your media. Click and drag the corner handles to move them. Outline mode applies a filter to your image that makes the image mainly black with edge outlines highlighted in white. This mode is useful when you are trying to match a projected reference image onto a physical object. Enter outline mode by choosing output, outline mode from the menu. You can also enable or disable outline mode using the toggle above the canvas in the interface. Additionally, you can use the shortcut toggle O to enable or disable outline mode. Whiteout outputs white pixels from your selected display. This mode is useful when you are checking the coverage of your projection. It's also useful for illuminating your projection surface when taking a reference photo. Enable whiteout by choosing output Whiteout from the menu. You can also enable or disable whiteout using the toggle above the canvas in the interface. Additionally, you can use the shortcut toggle W to enable or disable whiteout. The AI Generator widget allows you to perform image to image AI generation using whatever is in your canvas as an input. You can launch the AI Generator widget by clicking the AI icon on the toolbar. 
an internet connection is required to perform AI image generations with LumaMap. Note that the AI generator is only available with the full version of LumaMap, not LumaMap Lite. The widget can be collapsed or expanded using the arrow to help you manage your space in the interface. The widget can be repositioned in the interface by clicking and dragging on the grab handle at the corner. Deactivating the AI tools using the AI icon in the toolbar will automatically close the AI generator and art tools widgets. You can close a widget by clicking the X. Enter a text prompt describing what you would like to be depicted in your generated AI image. Try to be descriptive and capture the subject, mood and style of what you would like to see. Choose the diffusion model you would like to use for your AI generation from the drop-down. Higher numbers after the model name denote a more recent model release. For example, Stable Diffusion version 2 was released more recently than Stable Diffusion version 1.4. Different models produce different looks, so experiment to find one that produces a look you like. Models containing XL in the name represent the most advanced models on offer. They produce superior results in terms of composition and realism. These models cost more credits to use. You can select the art style you want for your AI generation from the drop-down list. Art style doesn't impact the credit cost of an AI generation. The prompt strength ranges from 0 to 35 and is controlled with a slider. The prompt strength decides how strictly the AI generator will obey the text prompt. Lower numbers give the generator more freedom to be creative. Higher numbers force it to follow more closely to the prompt. Prompt strength doesn't impact the credit cost of an AI generation. Prompt strength is set to 7 by default. Note that prompt strength values at the extreme ends of the slider may produce unappealing results. The image strength ranges from 0 to 100% and is controlled with a slider. The image strength decides how much the AI-generated image will resemble your canvas. Lower numbers give the generator more freedom to be creative. Higher numbers force it to stick more closely to the canvas image. Image strength doesn't impact the credit cost of an AI generation. The seed is a number that decides the initial random noise that contributes to the AI generation. The same text prompt, when combined with different seed values, will produce different results. If you like the general look of an image but want to make some small tweaks, keep the seed value the same and adjust the text prompt. A default seed value of zero will be used if no seed value is specified. The credit cost of an AI generation is shown in a small tag on the Generate button. Clicking the Generate button will initiate the AI image generation process. Generation times will vary depending on factors like your selected model and internet speed. When you have clicked Generate and waited a short time, a preview of your AI-generated image will appear in the preview pane. Your four most recent AI generations are temporarily stored in the slots beside the preview pane. Clicking a filled slot recalls that AI generation to the preview pane. Your most recent AI generation is stored in the top slot. Recalling an earlier generation does not have a credit cost. The preview pane displays a low resolution image. You can choose to upscale it to the resolution of your selected display and load it to your canvas. Upscaling has a credit cost because AI is utilized to scale the image. The credit cost of the upscale is shown in a small tag on the upscale to canvas button. If you no longer wish to view your AI generated image in the canvas, Click Unload to remove it and reveal your original media with any corner pinning or creative art editing applied. You can launch the Art Tools widget by clicking the AI icon on the toolbar. Note that Art Tools are only available with the full version of LumaMap, not LumaMap Lite. The colorizer allows you to replace the colors in your canvas with new colors. Any colorizing applied to the canvas is also input into the AI generator. New colors are specified as a gradient. Colors on the left of the gradient replace the darkest colors in your original image. 
Colors in the middle of the gradient replace the midtones of your original image. Colors on the right of the gradient replace the lightest colors in your original image. Enable the colorizer by clicking the colorizer icon or by interacting with any of the colorizer controls. Disable colorizer by clicking the icon again. Colorizer can also be enabled or disabled using the shortcut toggle C. You can choose from a selection of preset colorizer gradients. You can edit the gradient by clicking and dragging the position of the knots. This affects which range of colors in the original image are replaced by that color. You can also double click a knot to bring up a color wheel where you can select a new color. The paint tool allows you to paint colored pixels on your canvas using your cursor. Any painting applied to the canvas is included in the image input to the AI generator. Enable paint by clicking the paint icon or by interacting with any of the paint controls. Disable paint by clicking the icon again. Paint can also be enabled or disabled using the shortcut toggle P. You can change the color of the paint tool by double clicking the square color swatch. Five of your recently used colors are saved in storage slots to be quickly used again by clicking on a slot. Your most recently used color is stored in the leftmost slot. The paint tool has two parameters, size and opacity. Size affects the diameter of the paintbrush. You can use the slider to adjust the size. Opacity affects the transparency of the paintbrush. You can use the slider to adjust the opacity. Note that the paint tool is affected by any corner pin transformations applied to your canvas. This can lead to unexpected results if extreme transformations are in effect. The Erase tool allows you to remove painted pixels from your canvas using your cursor. Enable Erase by clicking the Erase icon or by interacting with any of the Erase controls. Disable Erase by clicking the icon again. Erase can also be enabled or disabled using the shortcut toggle E. If you want to remove all painted pixels from your canvas, you can use the Reset Canvas button. You can also reset the canvas using the shortcut. You can export what is in your canvas. This includes any corner pinning you have applied, colorizing or painting done with the art tools, or AI generations you have loaded to the canvas. Your export will be the same resolution as your selected display, shown as the output resolution below the canvas. You can export your canvas as an image by clicking the export image icon on the toolbar. You can set a destination and file name for your export and choose from either PNG or JPEG formats. You can also export a still image from a video in your canvas. You can export a video in your canvas by clicking the export video icon on the toolbar. You can set a destination and file name for your export by clicking the folder icon. Use the checkbox to enable or disable audio in your export. Once you click export, a progress bar displays how much of the export process has been completed. You cannot use export video when an image is in your canvas. You also cannot use video export when there is painting on the canvas.